Hmm? <laughs> Hello, welcome to Hepatia stage. I would like to welcome on stage our next speaker, Jose Luis Agundes, who leads innovation program at Telefonica Dynamic Insights. He will present his talk, Data-Proof Innovation. Please welcome Jose on stage. Thank you. Thank you, Senia. Um, my talk today is um, on data-proof innovation. That's a um, catchphrase for something similar to a bulletproof vest. In this case, you're trying, or the idea is to try to help with some tips on how to build um, data-proof, whatever it means. Like, imagine a, a, um, a security vehicle that is, that is well armored. So you want your application to be proof, to be able to resist the big data flow and not to break and not to provide bad quality problems and, and in, in basically do it while you can at the beginning, not when you have already built the platform. So that is, that is a bit the, 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 the spirit of that, that title, Data Proof Innovation. And uh, I would like to start by asking some of the audience, do you have a uh, software engineering background? Do you, do you know how to code? Do you have experience in coding? Well, but that, that is also me. I was, I was um, trained as a software engineer. I did uh, half of my career um, as a programmer, having all the fun with C, C++, and Java, and then growing into, into all of the possible roles within the software engineering career. And then at some stage, I, I wondered, out of curiosity, what happens before I do have that technical specification on my desk, before we do start to code? Is there any way in which this is organized uh, formally, or this is something that happens at random? How do we get to code one functionality piece instead of the next feature? So, how, and then I started to shift my career into something which is quite fun as well, and there's more into, I started doing um, studies and pre-studies, and then uh, some research in which I produce patents, which is, which is something I can only recommend, a uh, patent way of thinking. So even if you don't have a formal training in patenting, thinking about the problem solving in statement, state of the art, what is out there? What are the, prob the problems found in the state of the art? And how my solution can solve that problem is something that, that is, in, it is, it is a good way of um, proving that your initial idea has something to, have some, something unique in it. And so, from patenting some things, I went into standards because, uh, of course, some of the patents I was doing went into standard bodies like uh, a 2G or 3G. So that was an interesting bit because I, I hadn't been in contact with the standards delegates. And that is a part in which you are specifying things which are not code but will end up in a feature in an equipment. So in the end, it was, okay, this is a way in which you learn to code. Well, you, you will influence what the coders do. But there, there were more because then I moved into partnerships and then you get to talk to other teams with, um, for instance, an, on a startup and that a startup might have a brilliant team of engineers. Then you get to talk to teams which are not in your same, exactly your, under your same structure, either organizationally or the same company. So that gives you a completely different view on how you can mix and match things you find in your partners and things you've got inside, you have built with your teams. And... Um, and then I also had the chance to work with the venture capital teams. And doing audits, technology audits of, of companies is, is amazing. It's, it's an amazing uh, exercise as well. So that is why I came to, in, in, in at one moment, to say, okay, now uh, I've been doing this on a broad sense, like it's analyzing cloud, um, um, writing patents and standards for, for telco equipment, doing things on on anything uh, f from video to some other technologies. And then I said, okay, how about bringing all this down to, to, to try to see if within just one niche, just one thing which is big data, with all the different things within big data that are fixed, we could, I, I could try to help organize all that happens before we, we get to code. So that is why um, we got to to, to put together an innovation program together with, uh, with what we do at Telefonica Dynamic Insights. This, this is a business unit within Telefonica, which is uh, um, 
created just one year ago, approximately, and that is basically focused on producing or, or building and, and operating and selling a product based on looking at the data from radio networks and producing some insight aggregated and based on, of course, aggregated and anonymized signals, but something that is extrapolated out of the radio signals. And in doing so, we have been learning some, some lessons, some, because that, as, we, as, I say, as I speak now, there is some big data crunching going on. So this is happening as we speak, and this is, of course, production, production grade uh, big data, um, as opposed to maybe some, something that comes from an uh, from a, um, a academic um, background. This is, this is running as we speak, and this is being sold as we speak. So, and in doing that, there's, there's an interesting paradox. We are learning, we are, we are having some insights on how do you produce insights. And this, uh, this is something that we hope that will be useful for you if you are in the, in the quest to, to build or to test uh, a big data-based idea. So, oh my god, another funnel, you may say, because being in the, if, if you have read any inf innovation um, literature, it is very easy to see this kind of diagram and mean nothing from nothing to next to nothing. But in this case, is it is a reflection. I mean, I could put a name on each of those uh, circles because those are projects that I am running in the, in the pipeline of innovation. So there's, there's a number of ideas coming, of course, but some of them get, get described as, as an opportunity. So we try to analyze for each of those ideas a number of concrete uh, aspects from the value proposition to the partners to el everything in between so that at some point we can make a decision on which of those are we going to try and execute as a proof of concept? So are we going to put some money and, and teams into doing those, those proof of concept? And um, of course, the, the, the happy moment is when, you, when some of them have, have been proven correct or have been proven as, um, as realizing the initial idea, and then we can jump into the product um, part of the pipeline which would be outside this talk, but it would be more like the kind of things you do in a software engineering environment, which you get to code what you've been uh, previously deciding to do. So in this case, it's, it's all about looking for that needle of, of insight within the, the, the heap of data. And our approach is no different than many others, which is having a fail-fast fail phase in which we try to remove as much uncertainty by testing as possible. And uh, in, in doing so, many of those ideas, as you can see by the approximation on the number of, of circles, many of those ideas don't make it. You just start to try, start to, to put together the analysis, and then you see that you're not going forward with that. But you have not done that, that dropping of ideas, you have not done it here when you have spent a lot of money. So that is the basics of this. And uh, the difference with um, a textbook is that uh, this is, the, this is the, the funnel we use. So this is it's just a depiction of something real. It is not an, an academic exercise. So what would be a first step in all this? Um, just, uh, just imagine all those ideas coming, all that noise that is coming. Everyone is trying to propose something new. How do we handle that? How have we done? What's, what's the experience and how we can, we can point to some interesting ideas for you to, 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 to have a, um, some help? So, just imagine you've got your risk table, table um, game and, and you need to decide which regions are you going to be uh, conquering or which is going to be your, your army or uh, it is, it is, in a sense, it's, it's similar to that. You need to take a step back and, while you can, do the thinking. And the thinking basically is, okay, which is a marketing which I can, it can get real money. Is, is there money in that ma market? Let's say that I have mentioned some of them here. Is, is media uh, a market that, uh, that will provide enough cash at the end of my code? So will, will I do a lot of big data um, um, uh, crunching? And at the end of it, I will have something that is, that is really not bringing all that money. So that is one of the things that when we, end, when we are by the end of this talk, we will see that the top management, if you're within a company of the investors, if you're in a startup, will never forgive you if you have not done your numbers. So 
you need to start thinking on the numbers even before you, you finalize your cost versus profit. But, and that starts here. When you take a look at the sectors and markets, and which is the value chain that you are trying to, to attack. So a good gap analysis, and I will say that in, in, in something like lo Londoners might understand, mind the gap, please. Mind the gap. It is very important. It is much more important than one, one uh, would imagine at the beginning. So you need to really, really get your mind about where are you going to be attacking. And at that point, start acting. So once that you've got a decision on one of the markets, then you go for it and you try to see how many, how many ideas can you uh, put in the same pipeline. And we will see the pipelines later. So that would be uh, like uh, the moment which you think big and then you need to, to, to think about how sharp are your tools. The first idea is usually probably to, to see, uh, see the idea to, to, to be um, worth it, but you can always use pattern thinking or you can always have a, a kind of a, a competitive approach in which to put two different teams uh, to think on the same idea and, and they will come with different, different approaches to the same idea. And that is vital here because you need to add value. Otherwise, the, that piece of insight that you think that is going to solve the world will be irrelevant. So it is, it is something complex and it, is, it takes time to, to come up with an idea that is, that is not blurry or blunt, it's sharp. And, and when you explain it to other one, you will get it. You will get it and, and it will, it will be, um, you will get support either from technical managers or for, from investors. So for instance, churn, proximity ads, things like that. It's hard to say that those are original ideas anymore because so many people have been talking about making a churn data analysis so that I know how many people is going to leave my user base. That is, it's, it's, there's nothing to be, to be or there's nothing, that, there's, there's a low probability that you will find something new. Still, you can try, but there are probably less beaten paths. And of course, one that you've got your idea, that the proof of concept will, see, will, will be the vehicle by which you, you put it in the hands of your clients and they say, okay, is this, is this works for me or not? And allows you to iterate and to know if that was exactly or not so exactly the idea. So um, finally, another thing that you need to do before you get into too much of the heat of the, of, of, of the programming on the big data and the Hadoop crunching and so on is, is to look for the best partner for your quest. You're going to be engaging into a long or mid-term programming exercise. So in this proof of concept uh, phase is where you can and you should take a look at what other things are there that will allow you to save time but by incorporating a piece of software or a piece of a solution that is solving one part of the problem already. And which parts are, are not there. So you need to build them. It is, there's no way around it. So you need to, some of the things you will need to do in house, but some other parts and as many as you can, you need to take them from the market and, and apply uh, and, and, and get into partnerships with, uh, with some, some partners. And in the big data space, there's no shortage of them. So it is, it is one thing that coming from a software engineering background, I know. It is difficult for the same team that is, same team that is de developing something to say, no, we don't do the next thing. We leave it to this other partner. And now we do something else. Because you get emotionally attached to your code. So sometimes you need to do it. You need to think that that thing that you started has served as, um, as a proof of concept. But then when you build the product, that is not going to be the code. It's going to be the partner's fully operational product that is going to use to, to, to cover that space. But for the proof of concept, of course, you might, you might build more, more things that, you, that, that will reach the, the, the production grade product. So um, after you have done that exercise, then you get to the data proof point. Of course, this is where you, where you first touch the data that is going to come into your, into your big data product. And, and that, is the, that is the black gold of, of this era, the, 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 the data feeding the pipe. But uh, of course, there is there might be um, a flow, uh, um, a yield of, of black gold near you, but are you allowed to touch it? Are you, have you got the necessary security measures to do it? Um, has the data have any quality at all? Or do you have to work a lot to get that data to be of, of quality, to be credible? So 
these are things that, of course, are, uh, are not taken into account that, of, of course, you need to have access to the data and you need to be able to store it and so on. But these are things that we have found in our experience that were showstoppers. You did not address them early enough. So just if you are using Twitter-like opt-in or Google-like opt-in consensus, you want to use my product, okay, uh, you opt-in so that I can use your data in some other stuff, like Google Gmail or anything like that. Or if you have census-like data, so you're going to do statistical aggregations like we do. We take data from the networks, we shuffle it in a number of ways, and we further aggregate it each time so that in the end it's one number in a 200 by 200 meter cell um, or a square in the cities. And uh, that is another completely different way of processing the data. And to, but in both cases, you need to go and check with your country regulator because data protection is such a big issue that if you don't, you don't do that, that homework at the beginning, you're, you're going to find those problems anyway. So in our case, we, whenever we try to uh, extend the regional reach of our products, we, the first thing we do is sit down with the regulator. Only then we can proceed. Um, what about data security? It may be the case that in your cases, because the data source is um, is um, open data, for instance, you don't have to worry about security because it's already public data. But in our case, we are handling kind of 100 requirements on security alone from the data source. So the data source doesn't reach our big data system before we have complied with 100 security requirements, including, of course, data protection, but also access and um, audits people, security, a number of things which are important and relevant. And you need to somehow remove from the mix when you move forward because you will be, uh, in case you are successful with the proof of concept and you're given the OK, you will have to solve those. And if you have not thought about them, you will find them anyway. So part of building a successful proof of concept is to have that addressed at some point. Maybe you don't have a by the end of a proof of concept, you don't have the solution to the 100 requirements, but you understand that you will need them along. So you need to think about that early on. And data quality, that was the big surprise for us. There's nothing like, um, in a, in, we will see later in, a, in another slide, that there is nothing in, a, in the software related to big data crunching that is uh, more important than having the data quality right. You may have built a beautiful pipeline. Everything is being um, transformed as expected. You get your numbers at the end is garbage in, garbage out. Because you didn't pay enough attention at the data source. You need to make a number of corrections. In this case, uh, I have a, an interesting story, which is very early days when we had our first batch of data crossed through the pipeline. All, all of the hundred steps that compose the pipeline were taken, and if we first visualized the data in a, in a map. It was the, the, the Smartest Steps UK product. And then we, we were so happy that we invited uh, a friendly retailer to see it. First thing that the retailer does, click on one of the retail spaces of his own, and sees that uh, it's, it's nearly empty, and the, the 200 by 200 meter square near, near the, the retail space is full of people. And then, of course, we had just, just used one data source, while there's another data source that we needed that was something like a, the direction of the antennas and 200 parameters more. We needed to take that into account because otherwise we were putting the people in the wrong place or the extrapolated people. Amazingly enough, the, the land near the shopping mall was a cemetery. So we could imagine, all the team could imagine all those zombies with <laughs> <laughs> with the uh, mobile sticking out of the, of the ground. And it was kind of a, of a moment in time, because from that point on, we, we had to put an army of quality specialists to take care of that. So that, that is that. But of course, it, is, it may easily double your work, because you need to, have to set up another team. There is something that you need to be aware of early enough, otherwise you will miscalculate the cost, for instance, towards the end. So what? We have addressed the data, the, the black gold, and now we have, OK, we need to put together something that will crunch that data, all this big data hype. How do we go about that? Is this the same as, as um, uh, putting 
some Oracle uh, database and then um, put in some ETL tools off the shelf? Uh, can, I, can I contract SAS? Can I use SAP for this? Or can I use any of the off-the-shelf uh, statistic packages? Well, only that is uncertainty is making that all of these people have amazing budgets being thrown at this because it is, it is, there are inefficiencies in this market at this point. So it is quite easy for any of the guys in, in this different silos to say, no, no, what you need to focus is the storage, so I will sell you your storage solution. No, no, what you need to focus is the analytics, so I will send, send, I'll sell you my HANA solution or whatever. I mean, it's, it's no, uh, there are inefficiencies, so there will be holes there, there will be gaps, and there will be a lot of people making money out of the, of the, of the mess and the noise. So what, what did we discover? Of course, you need to store your data, you need to analyze it, you need to clean it, and you need to, to show it, to visualize it in some place. That is, that, is, that, is, that is what you need to do. But what are the things that we discovered that were things we, 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 we weren't expecting were so hard? The team. What happens with the team? Okay, you cannot, it is not the same case as when, uh, when you have an Oracle database and you say, okay, I'm, I'm hiring database experts. You know the kind of profile you need. But in this case, even the selection of tools is a challenge. You don't have the set of tools already. How are you going to hire someone that is a specialist in what? So there is a point in timing which you need to decide which are the tools that you're going to be using so that then you can hire the teams. And this is, this, this, you need to do this early enough and understand, have someone at least that can do that role with the technology background necessary to, to be able to handle this, ta this task. So of course, you will need Hadoop, or many, many of the applications. In our case, in our experience, we use, we use Hadoop. Uh, so it is kind of a partner, because we are partnering with the open source community. But um, we also, some, some parts of the teams uh, during the exploratory phase use R, which is, a, is a, it's an analytic program. But it's not, some people are also using it in combination of Hadoop. In our case, it no, it's not like that. But you need to, to mix and match these this tools to your particular needs. And um, as with all inefficient markets, there are startups that are growing the Silicon Valley and many other places that will help you understand and not to have to go to, to this. Um, you, you, you will be able with some companies like Continuity, which is, we have found to be an interesting company. Um, they will help you with no experience on MapReduce or in Hadoop or any of the other parts of the ecosystem to be able to run a nice and organize visually a nice pipeline of big data. And that is a way to help uh, compose your team. Do not have to train them in all the nitty gritty details of MapReduce through Java, through Hadoop. But you can do that visually. You, you can start ramping up while you can still be doing the hard work. So that is something that we will see. There are, there are several startups to focus on, and they will be helping there. But what is not usually said is that it does not stop there. You need more people and skilled people in some other things, which, for instance, if you have to attend 100 security requirements, you will need a security team, someone that is specifically good at cryptographic algorithms or whatever it is you need. But, and that, those will not be the, the, the Hadoop experts. There will be some other set of experts. You need them, probably. And um, this is very heavy on, on project management. Because if you put together a data, data source team, a security team, a visualization team, then you need to do heavy project management. And that is something that is not often, um, um, that doesn't come to the surface often. And of course, orchestration. We'll, I have a slide on that later on. Um, visualization is something which is mostly ad hoc th these days, because you, you have to to, to sell with some eye candy your, your, your application, your, the, the, the insights, the data is hard. You cannot look at data and see anything. So you will basically have to either put your data on a map or do something funny with your data that looks like a, a visualization that somehow makes you understand the outliers or the differences in the data. But in any case, please remember there was a, a funny video lately in the, um, that crossing the internet. There is a uh, data in a map is just data. It's not data science. It's not big data. It's just data on a map. It's the same data only that you can visualize it. So many people, 
uh, uh, when approaching, approaching this field, say, okay, we have put this data in a map. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's still data. Then you have not transformed it. You're just trying to understand it, which is fine, but it's at the beginning, not the end of the, of the, um, of the pipeline. And of course, if you don't want to have zombies in your loan, uh, it's important to pay, to pay a lot of uh, attention to your quality. So it is, it is, um, th there are teams having to, to, to be dedicated to that and to be um, working, for instance, in our case, with the network, uh, network teams to, to get that right. It's, it is by, by default, it will not happen because data many times has a primary use and big data is a secondary use. So there is the, pri the priority is just not there on the team that owns the data to, 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 to make this kind of jump. And now you have been all rickrolled because that is Rick Astley up there. Why I'm using Rick? Because this is, uh, this is a really complex system in the end. And if we could compare it, for, in, for instance, with a mobile application, it would be like comparing a pop band to a philharmonic orchestra. Of course, they both make music. But there is this like, like no other <laughs> way to compare it. It is, you, in, in an orchestra, you need to know where the string section composed by several musicians need to go after or before the wind section. So you need to have uh, uh, Herbert von Harajans of, of sorts having, having to organize all, the, all that huge bunch of people working. And, uh, and of course, that, that happens while you are learning what is the, going to be the pipeline that you need to use. It's not, it's not a given. And um, so you need to, it is, it is like when the orchestra is, 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 is first playing a new, a new composition that they are learning to play together. So that is, that is uh, uh, quite heavy on, on coordination and you need to pay attention into that. And uh, maybe there are other applications which are similar, which don't require all that coordination um, load, which is a cost in the end. Um, of course, one, one of the things that you want to do while you do this is to have an exploratory phase in which you decide which kind of transformations will extract the insight you, you want for, to address that sector or market that you identified at the beginning. But of course, at some point, you need to, 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 to solidify that and to just do one pipeline because you're going to be moving into production and you want to understand the complexities when you go into production. And, uh, and there is a catch there. If your architecture is, will only accommodate one pipeline, then you're also in a bad situation because you will think of new pipelines. You may, you may try to go for new markets or sectors. So it is a, it's a trade-off. You need to be flexible enough to allow some other transformations of the, of the data to be, to be happening so that your structures down there in, in Hadoop are not so fixed that will not change. But you need to leave a space for, a, for an exploratory approach, and that is why the proof of concept uh, phase is, is so good for this. And of course, some, some problems are simply don't belong here. Some problems are just um, reporting tools, or some other statistics tool, or just a visualization tool may help you. So you don't need to go through the pipeline to, for everything. Scale was the, the third thing that we think is, is relevant. So the team, the pipeline, and the scale. I know you know the story of, um, of an airport that was, that was built in, um, in Spain, in uh, Don Quixote land, uh, which basically didn't respond to any user demand. It was more of a, of a territorial um, dispute or so, of sorts. In any case, the, the thing is that it was built uh, for one billion, it was sold by 100 million, and it is in the middle of a desert, basically. So be, be careful with that. I mean, do you really need to start purchasing equipment or purchasing solutions in order to, to, to produce your, your, your product? Can it be done maybe with a cloud solution at the beginning, and then see how do you scale? So that is something that we learned. And uh, for the innovation phase, we use, we use mainly cloud. And then we, when we move into production, we make a decision to how do we cope with the, with the scale. But it is, it, is, um, it, it, it is a learning process. And um, because uh, the transformations in the data drastically reduce the size. So you may not need so much storage as, as in the raw data. That's, that, is, that, that is something that, that needs to be taken into account. And then finally, bandwidth. 
in big data, if you don't take your analytics where the, where the data is, at some point you're going to be needing to, 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 to bring your house to another, to another or to, 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 to bring that rock to another place. You may, may need, for instance, uh, we, we had that. Uh, at some point we wanted to run new algorithms on the data. And uh, what do you do? Do you copy it? We're talking big data here, so you need twice the storage and a big bandwidth pipe to, to, to tra translate that. So thinking about how are you going to allow different accesses to the, to the data, to the original source of data, or, the, or to, to the, to the um, data that you're going to be transforming, it is relevant, because otherwise you may end up incurring in costs that you, don't, that you are not perceiving. So we're getting very very quickly to, to, uh, to an ugly place. I don't like talking about money, but they, they being the, the investors, they being your top management, will be talking about money. How much money is going to bring all this big data fancy, fancy stuff? So some things that we consider in making a business case uh, for, for new ideas. Of course, on the cost side, let's start first with the pain. Um, you, if you're going to be selling that product, you need to put up uh, a sales organization. You need to, to feed it with, with nice marketing material. So they need, they will need, you will also need a marketing team. And what about the communications? Will you never communicate? You need to think about that. How are you going to address that? Uh, and don't get me started with the data regulator and the legal, because then you need to pay for, if, if, if your lawyers are not part of the firm, you need to pay lawyer firm. So that is that. Um, the costs of those partners, of course, they, they, they will provide you a piece of software that will allow you to do all the things you need in production. But they will have a cost. You need to put it into your, into your spreadsheets. You, you, you need to make it part of the case. And if you need any consulting in between, or if, the, if, the license, if there is no, uh, not a license but a revenue share agreement with one of the partners, then that needs to be taken into account. And of course, all the basics of what you are doing. So, do you need to operate? You need to build, operate, a uh, big data system. So you will you will incur in those in those um, costs. Uh, same with uh, your experience and uh, having all those data sources sorted out and um, all all the problems in the data before reaches you sorted out. That also takes money. So you need to to somehow account for it. You may be getting it for free, but. Uh, it would be interesting to always make the exercise of, if you had to pay for it, how much it would cost. And of course, no business case succeeds if there is no more, not much more revenue than the cost. So in this case, we look at, we need to look at how the, 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 the product will grow in five years, kind of like what any startup would do. And um, what would be the revenue through licenses or through consulting or through your grab of the market, you're, you're getting into, into a market that you detected via your gap analysis. How are you going to, what, what is the benefit you're going to be getting through that? Maybe you get a brand return because you, your brand is, 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 growing, is growing stronger. In, in our case, maybe Telefonica is getting a better uh, uh, press, uh, um, a much, much stronger brand by being bold in the big data arena and having products there when some other um, operators don't. So, and in the end, you need to wrap it all up and, and say that if we are creating big data opportunities and you want to create a great, a great big data opportunity, um, it is, in the end, it all boils down to trying to remove as much uncertainty as possible and to go for a good value proposition that will make your customers go crazy about it. I want, to, I want that because it will allow me to make my, my financial transactions better. Or it will, as, a, as a retailer, I know where to put my new store. I'm going to be spending 5 million euros in opening a new uh, McDonald's. I, I want to know. It's, it's, a, it's a money decision for me. So that, that, that is something that, that really needs to engage the customer. And if not, then you're your proposition may be a nice proof of concept, nice project, and then you, you're left at that. What about the black gold? What is your data assets? Are you only depending on one source? Are you mix and maxing with some other sources? Do you need um, a map, a, a mapping uh, provider, so that you've got your nice Google Maps or, or Microsoft Maps or whatever it is uh, underneath your, your hood, so that you can um, use it to, to geolocate your data. That, that is, that is 
uh, that is something you need to solve very early and, and, and do it well. And what about the data orchestra? We have seen several aspects that, that are in, interesting in that space. And the same for partners. You're getting to this quest, you're trying to, to, to bring this idea into, into the future and to, to do it uh, fast and uh, to reach as much audience as you can. So choose your partners. We chose, we chose a partner in the, in the market um, um, research um, space, which was uh, GFK. And we are partnering with GFK for uh, the sales of, uh, of Smart Steps. So you need someone either in technology or distribution or some, some other point in which it, is, it may not be clear. But thinking about it when you propose the idea, when you try to, to test it, is important. And finally, oh, sorry, show me the money. If there is no, if the, if the, if the scale goes the other way, it's not working. You're, you're spending more than you're earning. Doesn't make, the, doesn't make click. So with all this you have heard, do you feel like creating a big data proof of concept opportunity? I think so. Uh, it's, it's fun. It's fun in our experience. It's good. So thank you. I think there is some time for questions. Eh? Yes, thank you very much for your presentation, Jose. Do we have any questions in the audience? Hi there. Hi there. Um, when you're presenting this data to prospective clients, they're going to be typically business analysts or data analysts. They, they, what's the? I know there's no one universal set, but yeah. have you got an idea of what the the, the typical criteria they? deploy in terms of kind of testing the validity of that data? Because there is a lot of data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, we usually find that, uh, for instance, in this, in this space that we have started moving, retail, uh, the, our first product uh, is, is addressing retailers. We have found out that uh, they, they will usually have a similar thing, but not using our data, but mm, data based on surveys. Or in clickers, people with clickers manually uh, step, uh, at, at the outside of a store, click, 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 click. So they can validate, for instance, on a given spot, on a given time, with data they may get, they may get from, from surveys or from, from people counters. And that is a way to cross-validate. But we also do that before. I mean, as part of the exercise we learned while, while doing this, we have also learned that we need to, to do that ground testing so that we, we can pro provide, for instance, we do cross-check with, um, with the football stadiums. The football stadiums, they publish the attendance or the ticketing information the next day, on Mondays, for instance. So you can get always that data, go to the football stadium, get your, your count, and compare those two numbers and see if there is a reasonable amount. So that is what we do after, of course, initially being aggre more or less aggressively. Um, this doesn't match my numbers, of course. Of course. Hello. Hello. Um, yeah, well, thank you very much for a great speech. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm interested uh, to understand if it's your view to sell the insights that you develop um, about the network uh, kind of directly to uh, third parties, or if you're also looking to work it's with application developers if, who, who, would be, who would be able to access that data. That's something that, thanks for the question. It's a, it's a really pertinent question because we, we of course, at, as part of what we have started, um, it's, it's, it's a business unit. So we will not only have one product, but we had to start with someone that was quite visible and quite um, that any client on a B2B proposition could grasp. So we started by design by, with, with, a, with a product that was built on top of Insight and then could be licensed out as a, as a GUI to, to retailers so that they could do their, their own BI or their, their own marketing decisions or store planning decisions. Down the line, we are thinking, of course, on ways in which we can work with developers. And, uh, but it is, it, is, it is a bit hard at this point because, of course, there are a lot of regulations to be, to be um, so, uh, solved. But one thing that we are doing is to start, like, right here, right now, the Datathon. On the, on, the, um, on the campus party. We have had um, 13 or 15 teams working with data coming from the city of London and also having data from Smart Steps. So the data we produce, the count of people in the, in the streets of London and across the country, 
um, have been available for three weeks to the people working uh, on the data zone. So they have had the, the opportunity to, to play with it. And we are studying ways to move that, that initial experiment. It's the first time we release, and uh, it has taken some consultations with, uh, with the lawyers. So we will try to move that forward, but we don't know exactly the shape it will have. But yeah, it's, it's definitely, um, uh, we think it's an enabler, because of course, we don't know it all. And then we can do some fancy innovation, but if we can use the, knowledge, the combined knowledge of all uh, application developers, that will be much more powerful. Um, hi. Hi. Uh, thanks for the talk. And Thank you. Uh, when do you think Spain will catch up with the UK, for instance, regarding the demand and supply for big data opportunities and solutions? Um, that's a that's a very quest good question. I've, I've been involved myself in um, in trying to to help that catch up occur, and it is it is um, it's a, it is a decision that they, each of the country operations need to make. So. We, we do have an intention, and it's stated in the very philosophy of Smart Steps and Telefonica Dynamic Insights, to take our solutions to all of the markets in which uh, Telefonica operates. But so far, it is, it is a decision that, in this case, the data source owner, which is, would be the each of the country operations, need to pass through their own decision process. So it takes uh, the time necessary for uh, the, the, each of the operations in the countries to, to get to a point in which we can we can launch. Of course, we are testing the waters, but we are not there yet. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Jose. Hi. Thanks for the talk. Um, Thank you. you gave a couple of examples of um, insights that you felt that um, had, had been done, like churn and targeted mm -hmm. advertising. Mm -hmm. um, I wondered if you could give us a couple of examples of um, insights that are kind of on the horizon or stuff that really excites you that's coming next? Uh, yes, there are things that will blow your mind, but I will have to kill you after telling you. So <laughs> no, there, there are things that are really interesting, uh, especially in, in light of our uh, having Sandy Pentland as an advisor of Telefonica Dynamic Insights have been really, really, really um, open, open up a, a number of possibilities that we didn't want to, or we, we, we had paced like different in a different timing. So now we will try to, to move some of those into, into a closer roadmap stage because uh, it, is, it is all of the behavioral um, patterns and uh, ways about um, inferring from, from trends, but then not, not, not just staying there, looking at the historical trends that we are doing in this, in this place, but also using that historical trends to extrapolate and to know what is happening next. Uh, that is that is a, an amazing source of possibilities, but we we are not there yet. <laughs> but yes, it is. A, it was one of those balls in my <laughs> my pipeline. Yeah. Thank you. Are there any more questions? Thank you very much, Jose. Thank you. Thank you all for being with Thanks. us.